If you wanted it sweaters, hats, cowls, and other round shaped things, then this video is for you. Hey guys, today I'll show you how to knit in the round with circular needles. We'll go over common mistakes, how to choose a needle length, and how to create a seamless join. Now, if you want to skip ahead to the demo, then head to the timestamp down here, and then you can skip all of this preamble. When you knit on two needles, you get a knitted fabric that looks like this. It's a fabric that lays flat and it's kind of two dimensional, right? So back side and front side. So things like scarves, blankets, and washcloths are knit flat. Now when you knit in the round, you get a fabric that is, well, kind of round. So things like hats, mittens, socks, and even sweaters can be knit in the round. See the difference? Flat versus knit in the round. So when you want to knit something circular, you would knit in the round with circular needles. As an aside, yes, you can knit in the round with double pointed needles and I've got a tutorial for that right up here, or up here, and also down in the description. But for this video, we're just talking about knitting with circular needles. So here I've got a 16 inch circular needle. So this measures 16 inches from tip to tip. So from here all the way down to here, it's 16 inches and it's a 10 millimeter needle. Now I'm going to cast on the stitches onto our needle. That's our first step. You can use any cast on that you like. So for me, I'm gonna use the long tail cast on because that's my preferred cast on method. And I'm gonna cast on about eh, 65 stitches or so. So go ahead and start casting on some stitches onto your needle. A common mistake that can happen is when the join gets twisted. I'll show you what I mean. So this is knitting in the round where a literal twist has incorporated itself into the knitting. So unless you are intentionally putting a twist into your work, don't get it twisted. I'll show you how to do this next. So here we have our cast on stitches and we are ready to join in the round. Now, a lot of the times your cast on stitches will not be as long as the length of the needle and that's okay. What we're going to do is just kind of stretch the cast on stitches so that they are close to the tips of the needle. So now that we've done this, we want to join this knitting from here to here, from the beginning to the end of our cast on stitches. Now, in order to do this without a twist, let's take a look at our cast on stitches. Our cast on stitches have this sort of raised ridge here, right? It's sort of on the inner part in order to join properly, you wanna make sure that this little braided ridge is all facing the same direction. So right now, our braided ridge are facing inward. If our stitches were twisted, we would have a literal twist and you would see that this braided area is facing in, but it twists around here and starts to point out, right? And that's how you know that there is a twist in your cast on stitches. So if you have a twist like this, you just literally untwist it so that once again, this braided ridge is facing inwards, right? They're all facing in. And when you have that, then your stitches are not twisted and you're ready to join in the round. So the end of your cast on should be on the left needle and the right needle should have the working yarn attached. That is the yarn that is attached to your ball of yarn. And now we're going to put in a stitch marker to mark the beginning and end of the round, basically where we join. So a stitch marker can look like this. This is an actual knitting stitch marker and we're gonna put it right onto our right needle like this. You can also use a piece of string that you have knotted. And now this could easily be a stitch marker as well. All right, so I'll use my little makeshift stitch marker and I'll put it onto my right needle. So I'm going to use my right needle and knit into the first stitch on my left needle. Here we go, I'm gonna push that needle tip in and with my working yarn, I'm just going to knit into that stitch and pull it right off. With that first stitch that we've knit, we have joined in the round. So you would just continue knitting across the round. Now, as you're knitting, you may notice that you kind of have to push your stitches up onto your left needle. This is totally normal, especially for this first round where the stitches can be a little bit tight because they are the cast on stitches. That's totally fine. So just push your stitches up onto your left needle if you find that they are kind of lagging behind. 
So now that I have reached the end of my round, which I know because of my stitch marker, I can take it off from the left needle and put it back onto the right needle and continue knitting. So you might notice that you got this kind of strand of yarn right between your needles after the first round, and that is totally normal. As you knit, this little strand will disappear, okay? So now that my stitch marker is over, I'm just gonna continue knitting into my second round. I'll knit that first stitch there and my second stitch. And now you can see that that little strand of yarn has kind of joined together, right? It's not really there anymore, not that noticeable. So what we completed just now was one round around the circular needle, and now we are working our second round, okay? So you'll notice the terminology is a bit different. When you're knitting flat, you're knitting rows, and when you're knitting in the round, you're knitting rounds. After knitting a couple rounds, you can see my knitting looks like this. It is nicely joined in the round, it is circular, so that is how you knit in the round. Every now and then I get a question, which is, my working yarn is coming out from my left needle instead of my right needle. What have I done wrong? The way to fix this is to literally turn your needle over, okay? And when you turn your needle over, you'll find that the working yarn is now coming from your right needle. And then you can just pick up your needles and continue knitting. You're always on the right side. What does that mean? <laughs> so when you're knitting in the round, you're always knitting on the right side. You never turn your needle over the way that you do when you're knitting flat. When you're knitting flat, you knit one row, turn the needle over, work the back row, turn it back over, work the front row, and on and on and on. But when you're knitting in the round, you're always knitting on the right side. You're going around and around in a loop. At no point do you turn your needle over to work the back side. There's none of that when you're knitting in the round. Because the knitting is joined, you're just knitting in one big continuous loop and the stitches just get stacked on top of each other. So why does this matter? Well, it means that when you're knitting in the round, your stitch pattern instructions are going to be different than when you're knitting flat. So for example, when you're knitting garter stitch flat on two needles, you would knit every row and every stitch. Just knit, 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 knit every row. But when you're knitting in the round, that's not the instructions for garter stitch. When you're knitting garter stitch in the round, you would knit one round and then purl one round, alternating between a knit round and a purl round. So you have two different set of instructions to get the same stitch, depending on your knitting, if you're knitting in the round or if you're knitting flat. So because you're always on the right side when you're knitting in the round, the instructions for stitch patterns will be different than when you're knitting flat. So just keep that in mind. To make your knitting look super seamless, then do this one weird trick. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, you don't have to do it, but if you're comfortable knitting in the round, then this will make your seam look super seamless, super clutch. To make a beautiful seamless join, cast on the number of stitches that you need, and then cast on one extra stitch. So we'll cast on one more. So I needed 40, and then I cast it on one extra one, so now I've got 41 stitches on my circular needle. I'm going to use my right needle to just grab the first stitch on my left needle. So I'm gonna use my needle, go into the stitch as if I was going to purl, and then just take it over to the right needle. Now I'm gonna use my left needle and I'm gonna grab this stitch right here and I'm gonna bring it over this one. I'm gonna go into this stitch and I'm just going to carefully drag it over the stitch, the first stitch right there, okay? And then now I'm just going to tighten up the yarn. This is my yarn tail from my long tail cast on. I'm gonna tighten the yarn, which is my working yarn right here. And now you can see that we have joined in the round, right? Now we still have this stitch right here and I'm going to move it back onto the left needle, bring it back to the left needle and then just kind of push everything down, do a little bit of tidy tidy. And now you can see that we have joined in the round. That extra stitch that we cast on is now here. It's connecting the first and last stitch together. So let's do that again. I'm going to use my right needle and I'm gonna grab the first stitch from my left needle. Just grab it, there we go. And then I'm gonna bring this stitch over 
the stitch that I just pulled over, okay? So I'm gonna use my left needle, I'm gonna go into this stitch, and I'm gonna drag it over this one, okay? Just bring it right over. You may need to use your finger to help you. There we go, okay. And now I'm going to pull down on the cast on and the working yarn, okay? And now I'm gonna bring this stitch back over to the left needle. So I'm gonna take my left needle and just grab it, pull it back over, reconfigure my stitches, do a little pulley pull, and now I'm ready to join in the round, or rather I'm ready to knit in the round because this join has actually joined us right here. So at this point, we've got our stitch marker. I will plop it back on to my right needle and I can start just knitting as normal. And you'll see that this join here is really beautiful and seamless. And if you count up your cast on stitches, you'll notice that that extra stitch that we casted on at the beginning has disappeared. And that is because it is down here at the join. And that's all there is to the seamless join. Use needles that are smaller than your finished project. So with this swatch, I have 94 stitches casted onto my 16 inch circular needle. And you can see that it fits comfortably on the needle with a bit of bunching. This is totally fine and preferable. Circular needles can actually accommodate knitting that's up to three times the length of the needle. Here, I've taken the knitting off the needle and you can see that the circumference of the knitting is larger than the length of the needle. And that's what we want. Now with this swatch, there are 70 stitches cast on and the knitting is just stretching and straining to move along the needle. Now this is no bueno. It's uncomfortable to knit with and it stretches the knitting and messes with the gauge. It'd be a better idea to switch to smaller needles like a 12 inch or to use double pointed needles. So you can see how tiny this swatch is. It definitely needs smaller needles. So remember, use circular needles that are smaller than your project. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Davina from sheepandstitch.com. I hope you learned how to knit in the round by watching this video and that a lot of round shaped things are in your future. If you like this video, then please like it and also leave a comment so that YouTube knows that you like and enjoy this video. I always love hearing from you guys, so please let me know what you think. What did you miss? What did you like? How is your day going? <laughs> All right, that's it for me, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.